So first of all, uh, thank you for inviting me today. It's really great to be part of this. Um, thank you very much for the introduction, Mary. Um, yeah, my, my background is worked at the University of Edinburgh for many years, then, then the University of Glasgow. I'm still honorary professor at the University of Glasgow, where I'm still doing um, my research and, and some teaching and PhD supervision as well. But I'm also working as a director of university partnerships at Higher Ed Partners. And what that means is that I work across the sector in the UK and I work with uh, vice chancellors, deputy vice chancellors at various institutions to just help them think about the strategy and implementing the strategy for online learning at their institution, specifically online distance learning, but much of the work that we do also helps the university shape online learning in general. So today I'm going to talk about using the learner's experience to shape future teaching. And just going to start by thinking a little bit about and reflecting on what, what the learners have said about the last um, year or so or more uh, when we've had to do uh, this pivot to online. And one of the things I think it's important to um, remember or to state, and hopefully you can hear me okay because my internet's telling me that it's a bit unstable, is that um, we've done online learning and specifically online distance learning um, in a, as a sector for many years, actually. I mean, sometimes some institutions for, for, almost, for almost 20 years, certainly thinking in the UK. But I think it's important to remember that the the scale um, that in which we had to implement online learning broadly across but all aspects of higher education as a result of COVID um, was, a, was a different thing that we had to do. And that's why we called it more of a, a pivot. And sometimes there was a term used around remote learning rather than online learning. And, and that was a bit... Um, strange for me in one sense when I used to think about remote learning and online learning I used to think well is it is it not online learning if students are accessing online and I think that it was really just an industry and a sector's way of saying that recognizing that we hadn't prepared in the same way that we would necessarily prepare for if we were delivering an online distance learning program. So just thinking a little bit about what are the reflections of the learners and I'm, I'm going to concentrate on what those the feedback was for those learners where they were on campus students as opposed to learners that were really think made that decision to study online so that you've got a different demographic there so people who've decided to study online at distance have made that for various reasons so they can't be on campus they have they're wanting to study part-time they're generally more mature learners, mature students. So they're a, they're a different demographic. But the main point is, is they had signed up for that. And when we think about the pivot to online is what students have signed up for was that on-campus experience. So this is really thinking about what were their experiences of that and how might that have differed from online distance learning, for example, and what reflections can, can we make to help shape things going forward? And that's going to be the, the last section that I'll talk about. So one of the things I think that came across quite strongly is that in, in some ways, students didn't feel they were having the same interactions online than they were having on campus. So those conversations weren't taking place in the same way that they would do. And also, when you think about students that are studying on campus, particularly if they're students new to studying, they've just come out of school, it's very overwhelming. And in a campus situation and sitting in a lecture theatre, the student can turn to the other student, ask a question, do you know what's going on here? And it can be a very isolated environment studying just at home on your own and not being able to do that. And when we think about online distance learning, that's one of the things we know is it can be isolating. We're building lots of things to do to help that, to help students build those, those connections and feel less isolated. But the other thing to add to this is that even with the online distance learners, they, because of the COVID and lockdown, people weren't having those human interactions to the same extent either. 
So we think about the on-campus learner, weren't getting that interaction with their peers, weren't getting that university on-campus experience, and also weren't getting that social interaction generally, specifically when there was real periods of, of lockdown. I've used the word inclusion here because actually, um, conversely, some students would report that they did feel it was more inclusive environment learning online, particularly around they felt a bit more comfortable asking questions online than they did in the classroom. So these were students who'd been in the classroom situation previously, and some of those students were saying, you know what, we actually do find it easier to ask questions online than, it, than if we're in a, a live lecture with you know, a lot of students there and we feel a bit more anxious about putting ourselves out there. I think the, the time aspect of studying online was a positive and students would report that actually, especially commuter students and some universities in Glasgow being one of them has a higher proportion of commuter students than others. So for commuter students, they were saying actually, and, and all students generally were saying the time aspect, there was a time saving there. And that was a, a positive for them. But actually the downside of it, and I'm sure all of us appreciate this from having taught online and having had lots of meetings, that being constantly online um, was felt like an overload of information as well. So where there wasn't that opportunity for conversation, collaboration, connection, and it was very much like that sharing of information or students listening to content, they very much felt like they were overloaded. Another key part was around motivation. And so students were reporting that when they were had a campus timetable, they knew to go to that lecture at that time, they were going there, they were committed to that. When there was a bit of a flexibility built in on the one hand, it was positive, but on the other hand, they were reporting that they found it more difficult to be motivated. And that's something we know from online distance learning anyway. And we know that we try to build in a lot of time that's ever happened to me. So, okay. So, so sorry, I'm back. I don't know what happened there. Uh, I think I got to the point where I was talking about that motivation uh, to study online and how that was challenging. And one of the things we do with online distance learners is try to help them navigate that. So saying, look, set, set aside structured time for learning, you know, try to stick to that schedule. Things that students were saying were that, you know, it was quite easy to say, do you know what, I'll catch the recording on that and then not catching up with the recording. So that, I think that's a chat, that's, that was a challenge for them. And um, participation as well, felt less able to participate in the same way. Um, some barriers there around being able to have those conversations in the same way they would do face to face. One thing that has become, you know, really apparent and, and you know, lots of us know this anyway, and it was just really challenging when there was a lot of work had to be done to pivot to online quickly is that the, the students would say that the work, it wasn't always as structured as they'd like it to be. So they weren't exactly sure what the structure was with some of the learning, and some of the things weren't necessarily clearly signposted. And again, that's work that we know with online distance learning is a key thing that needs to be you know, made incredibly simple and very well signposted. But again, it was challenging because there was so much to do in such a uh, little time to really think about that design piece and how to do that. Um, interactions for some students felt that they, they just were more difficult, and, but actually on the flip side, for some students that maybe find the face-to-face -face element of those social interactions more challenging, actually would report that they found it easier to interact online. So back up to this inclusion piece, for some students felt it more comfortable to ask questions online, some students, and if you're thinking around about neurodiversity, for example, found it actually much more relaxing and, le and they felt less anxious learning online than they did where they were having to do a lot of face-to-face -face interactions, which can be, you know, really draining for people who find that more, more difficult. Um, distractions were... Um, a positive and a, and a negative for both sides. So, so what I'm saying here is, is 
students would say, well, actually at home, you could really focus in, in one way because you weren't distracted by people around you chatting or things going on in the class. But on the other hand, you were distracted by things that were going on at home. And any of us who worked at home, we've had caring responsibilities or things going on or dogs barking and all of that will know that it was quite challenging to, to be focused at times. And actually, the COVID situation made that worse because it wasn't that students were under normal circumstances sitting at home, working away. Um, they were having lots of things, more, because of lockdown, things were more challenging. And I think that's why I'm saying this is because it's important to, when we reflect on what worked well and what didn't work well through COVID, we can't always say online didn't work because in some situations that's not normal situations of online learning because there was the lockdown and all other things going on so we have to just put that into the mix and, and be aware of that interestingly when you speak so to, when you speak to students in generally about their perception of online they don't have they don't see it as being the same quality experience as online they have that perception and another key aspect of it is there's quite a lot of preparation that takes place or is needed for students to be equipped to learn online. So all of the things we said around before around helping them to think about organising their time, making sure things are well signposted, making sure that students know where to find information and also have the skills to use the different tools. There's lots of preparation that needs to take place for people to be successful learners online. And actually, you know, there wasn't the time or the resource during the COVID pivot to, to build that in. Neither was there the time to really to stop and think about the design of what the online learning piece was, was like. So all of this is what I'm saying is we have to think about the feedback from learners when this was being implemented and think about, but was that an ideal situation? So what can we learn from it and what can we improve going forward? <clears throat> In terms around about the, the place, and I'm thinking about place as a sense of belonging for students, you know, so one of the positive students did report and learners would say is that this anywhere, anytime learning was really was a benefit around that flexibility piece. But the place and the space could be challenging at times. So not all students, and this is again for when we think about forward planning, have that space at home, that quiet space to learn. And they don't all, always feel where their place is within the institution without having that face-to-face -face connection. So the, the connections seem more challenging for people to establish or well, that's the feedback from on-campus learners when there's not that face-to-face. -face. And so therefore that sense of belonging to an institution is more challenging to create um, when students are learning online. And we know this from online distance learning as well. We really have to think about ways of how we can help online learners feel part of an, feel, feel part of an institution. And in actual fact, even when we're doing face-to-face -face learning, this this piece around belonging is really important for think about wider student communities so again i touched on commuter students before and it's how can they be made to feel part of the institution and really belonging to the institution where they're not necessarily spending perhaps as much time on campus as other students so it's online was challenging for students when they're thinking about the presence of the tutor, the instructor, the lecturer, other. Okay, take three. <laughs> um, okay, so, um, yeah, so this connects us people in this presence, connecting with people, feeling like there is this presence, there is people there. And actually, I know we're talking about learners experience today, but actually, um, I think a lot of people who were teaching online just felt like they were talking into you know, nowhere into a black hole sort of thing. Um, but this part around place and having access to study is also around access to equipment So and the cost. So what devices do students have and also the cost of, you know, internet connection, all of that adding. So that sort of digital divide creeping in there 
for students that potentially then disadvantage because of that. So systems, systems is a real bugbear for me. I am a, a really focused on systems actually. And, I, and one of the things about a learner experience is systems are not just the virtual learning environment or the tools that we use to engage students in learning. They're all systems, every single system. So when you think about the on-campus learner and they're coming to university, many students we know at all universities, a common theme in higher education, that simple things like being able to enroll for their courses can be challenging. And so therefore they can go on face-to-face -face time and see people at a help desk. And that can't take place when it's fully online or during the COVID period. And, it's, and I think that was a good opportunity to really highlight more that systems, when they don't work, it is really, really challenging. And it's very much part of that learner's experience and it can cause great anxiety and it can really set them up with not the best frame of mind to continue with their learning. So systems, you, um, um, having mentioned reliable here, I don't think I'm in a great place to talk about reliability given my internet connections dropped twice already, but that's really important. The systems need to be reliable and they need to be usable. And uh, for me, some symptoms need, systems, sorry, need to be simple. So it's making it for the learner as simple as possible. And that's all systems. And actually, although Zoom's let me down today, it's one of the things I like about Zoom is it's stripped back and it's simple to use. And so therefore, thinking back to the signposting piece and support around using systems, if we can try to use some systems that are straightforward and intuitive, it does make that learner experience much better. But one thing we do know is that Oh no, I think this is because Joanne's saying things about systems. <laughs> you think it's so deliberate. It's, so it's going to be being monitored by the powers that be. <laughs> <laughs> That's a shame. It is true though, students like consistency, don't they? And they do get quite, you know, they're already struggling sometimes with learning independently. And if you throw in too many platforms into the mix, that could be problematic. Absolutely. Oh, she's back. She yes. is. This is honestly ridiculous. I can't actually believe this is happening today, but we'll get there. I'm going to speak faster in case it happens again, and then you guys can chat as well. Sorry, I'll try and come in on my phone as well if I have to. So Vicky was talking there about the systems, and we can't just take it because people have mobile phones and, and school leavers are on their phone all the time that they have the digital skills to be able to come along and know how to use the VLE, to know how to use Zoom, to know how to go into the library and find things, to know how to search information online and know what's reliable pieces of information, etc. So they do need support. And I guess one of the things that COVID showed up for students is it's not just staff that needs the support around using the different tools, is that students need that in place. And do we have enough resource and how do we provide that support at scale? So if we think, and I'm going to talk about the future in a minute, we think about the future, how can we, um, and it's telling me my internet connection is unstable again, so hopefully it's going to stick with me. Um, we think about the future, how can we deliver a student experience that works really well with the, the human resource that we've got because we're not going to get more resource. Um, we're just uh, going to have uh, the same resource going forward but we're not going to have uh, additional resource to be able to support students to learn online and for staff to teach online. Can everybody still hear me? Yes, loud and clear, still Great. your slides. <laughs> Thank you. So, but this was a good thing around systems is that students did really like the opportunity to revisit the learning materials and that's where the recordings come in really well. And that's just, so students could go back and read things and stop and pause and rewind and take notes and go over it again. So that was a real positive and opened learners' eyes to the real potential of that. And then this is something uh, for the future, but thinking about what we could do with those recordings is using those learner analytics then and 
thinking more about an adaptive learning. So one thing we're not short of in universities is content. Now that we've been teaching online for a while, we've had to deliver content. It's maybe not always been in the, the best shape, but there's a lot of information available online now. How can we create a more adaptive learning environment that's personalised for that student? That if, for example, we were to go, we looked at the learner analytics and we knew that a student was struggling with a particular area, the AI could step in and, and send them off to some additional resources to help them with the learning. So just to talk about the future now and where we think, the, where I think the future will be and based on the things that we've learned during the last uh, couple of years, I think the one thing is to say the future was, we, we knew there was going to be a future around hybrid learning and we were pushed quicker than anyone ever thought we'd ever be to, to move online. And But one thing it did show is that universities can change quickly under certain circumstances. Um, but the hybrid model going forward certainly seems the way to go, the sort of digital and the, and the physical coming together. But there needs to be thought around how, that, how the digital and the uh, physical work together. So that digital space and making sure that the social elements are always built into both of these aspects. Certainly, flexibility is something that students really value. So giving them choice and flexibility and that personalised learning experience. But how do you do a personalised learning experience at scale? So student numbers are growing. Staff numbers are not growing. How do we, how do, we do that? And I think the only way we can do it is through technology. And coming back to the systems piece again, in my view, in, in higher education institutions, there's too much manual work done that staff, academic staff and administrative staff have to do manually that takes up their time and takes the time away from the things that they should be focusing on, which are the things that the only humans can do. So we've got to get our systems up to speed so that we can really focus on our time and sp spend our time well. This is where AI personalised learning could very much come into play with adaptive learning. So students could take a quiz, depending on the outcome of that quiz, they're sent off in different directions for different pieces of content to help them develop their learning and it becomes personalised to them. Community and collaboration is important. If anything that's been further highlighted through the period of COVID and learning online, so that has to be a key focus anyway, and we're always doing that as a sector, but thinking about how do we keep that community going, uh, promote that collaboration both online and also in the digital space. So again, thinking about students who want that flexibility of maybe coming together in a space on campus, actually working together as a group or working together a group in a digital space if that works better for them. But one of the things about the campus space is we need to have space where students can work. So where students maybe want to work as a group and tap into some technology or where students actually, if they don't have that space at home, can come to campus and listen to recordings, access the internet, go into a, a live lecture, for example. So maybe if there's an on-campus lecture taking place face-to-face, place -face, but those students who don't feel as comfortable in that setting can either tap into that from home or come to a space on the university and tap into that. But working with uh, students as partners and co-creators co is very much vital going forward. And I think a lot of institutions did a really, really good job to bring students into the mix around this, what was going on and how we were adapting things, you know, during during. COVID. Um, we can do a lot more to be innovative. Innovative needs to again come back to this. Is there a reason for doing something innovative? Is there a reason for doing something differently? And, and if we do, we are being innovative with technology. It's making sure that what we're doing is usable, it's simple, and, and it's reliable. And the authentic piece is really COVID's helped, I think, open our eyes to the fact that whilst we already thought that high stakes end of course assessments 
we're not the best way to examine students and we know that there's a huge amount on in the literature particularly around essay based, based questions that they're not reliable or reproducible necessarily is thinking about you know how we could reimagine assessment and how it can be more authentic and actually how it can be very more, much more linked with industry and bringing employers into the mix and i think as a sector we can be very guilty of of thinking about students within you know a research context and but what about those students that are going to go out there into the workplace and and certainly there's lots of really good programs and really lots of good work done where you know there's good connections with employers and employers are inputting into program design etc but i think it's really important to keep that going and to with online we have a real opportunity to make the curriculum and the student experience not just local but also global um, students interacting across the globe but also bringing different contexts in from different parts of the world or you know people who are studying in enough another part of the world taking information from the uk and then implementing that locally into how that would work well in that local context and then just finally to say that uh, you know there's a huge driver towards sustainability and and climate change and i think that younger generations are hugely um positive about that they feel very passionately about climate change and so everything we're doing around designing education programs really much has to bring into play the sustainability of it and that's sustainability in terms of you know carbon emissions and people traveling around but also sustainability still goes back to this piece around how do we support students to be lifelong learners to develop the skills to have a personalized learning journey through university when you know we we that takes that would take a lot of effort in human terms and what can we do around technology and innovations to really help that personalized student journey so that people can focus on the human elements and the things that only humans can do to just make sure that that students learners are, are having the best uh, experience and also achieving their outcomes as well so thank you for listening uh, happy to take any questions and apologies again for the um internet issues thank you